picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Now, don't you forget this. Why I should stick my neck out for you is quite beyond my capacity. Good morning, it's Saturday. We are microns away from being finished with the droids. Uh, just the tiniest bit of detail painting left on them and they'll be good to go. And then it's a question of finishing up these bases, which will take a minimal amount of work. I cannot seem to find the, uh, the uh, scenic wonderland uh, moss that I wanted to use on this box, so I may have to take a run out to Michael's to see if I can find some more. But um, this is ready for final detailing, and the uh, robots are ready for, the droids, sorry, are ready for final detailing, and the Yoda box is finally ready for final detailing. Not a lot of big showy stuff, but let's get this done and see if we have time to do anything else this weekend. Okay, on both of the droids, there are some tiny details that they give you even tinier silver um, decals for stickers, and uh, I'm opting to paint those rather than try to fix those tiny, tiny um, details for. And those are right there on those coin slots, and uh, also at the base of those, at the base of the arm there, those indents should be silver. So what I'm going to try to do is just take some basic metalizer chrome silver paint and uh, paint it in there, paint it in those places, and then do a quick wipe off and uh, see how that turns out. I think it's just going to give me a better uh, result than trying to paint those or trying to use the decals or the stickers. And the handy thing about this kit being a press fit kit is that I can disassemble it when I need to to uh, make painting easier. These parts come apart as easy as they went together. And here's the result. The nice thing about this uh, being enamel paint on plastic is I can simply wipe my thumb across it and get wipe the paint off of the uh, high spots. So let me go do the other three of these. Okay, just a little bit of dragging the top of the brush just over the tiny tops of that piece to get that uh, chrome ring there on those coin slots. Much uh, better than I could have ever done with a decal or a uh, sticker. So, and on the on red as as well, and to touch some silver onto the uh, spots. Like I said, most of the most cases I like the silver plastic, but uh, in some places you, you can augment it with a little bit of chrome silver paint, and it'll come out just fine. Now we're going to tackle this head. Remember way back. Last week I talked about not liking that seam. I'm afraid I'm going to have to learn to live with that seam. So what I'm going to do is take the head apart, um, since it's not glued, and clamp it together as hard as possible and sand that seam and put some glue in there and see how much of it I can make disappear. Okay, after leaving these things alone long enough for a while to dry because it was my old Nemesis silver, chrome silver, uh, enamel which I have a tendency not to let dry I am back to it and putting these things back together and you can see how the lovely how lovely the results are once the focus comes in there here you go focus and this little touches of silver and the droids are done now here's the all important joint on R2 and I think just from sanding and mashing it together and holding it real tight when it dried uh, I think I can live with that joint as is. I don't think I think dressing it up any would just call undue attention to it. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the um, the ink on there and just kind of rub it in so that it uh, the joint looks kind of like the rest of it and uh, call it done. And the last thing to do now on it really is to do some of that brown mud slash sand uh, aging weathering on uh, these two kits and then I'm gonna put some you know break up that sand a little bit more and then we'll be ready to I'm thinking glue these guys down uh, I hate to say it but uh, um, what I want to do is probably glue the uh, two feet the side feet on R2 and R5 down and I could still because of the uh, ankles for lack of a better term uh, pivot I could still bring it up 
and you know suck in that third leg and stand them up and have a little bit of opposability to it but um, uh, I do I think I do want to attach them to this box in some sort of a permanent manner okay what I'm doing now is muddying up the uh, the bodies and um, I'm starting out on R5 because if I screw it up uh, I'll learn not to do that on R2 um, but what I'm doing is taking some Comart old oil and just taking it on a brush and just wiping it on and then coming back and wiping it off and it's looking pretty good now I have to say for this is the, probably the first kit in years that I have uh, not only not primed but not painted or not painted but not primed so what that what that allows me to do though is get a real clean uh, wipe when you are wiping things off because uh, it's just bare plastic and uh, these water-based uh, paints or dyes or whatever colors um, will wipe right off if you uh, don't like it you can get them wet enough you can wipe it down but uh, what I'm trying to do is find a good level of dirtying for uh, R5 and then maybe a little bit less on R2 but with with hand brushes not with uh, not with the airbrush okay now these are three of the grungiest robots I think I've seen in quite a while um, I'm gonna come back and uh, take some off of R5 because he looks just a little too much but um, I dirtied up the sand a bit and grungied up R2 and R5 a bit I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna go and clean some of that off he's a little too worse to wear but I got carried away greetings it's Sunday morning and I'm playing hooky from church today bad boy so uh, I'm gonna finish up these two boxes two boxes not Chewbacca two boxes um, and what I'm doing is taking some lovely lichens I've taken a lichen to this box yes it's an old joke but I'm gonna repeat it every time I can uh, and some you know I was using this uh, latex hair glue on Yoda and I was reminded that somewhere in the deep bowels and recesses of the rest of this house somewhere I did have this old jar of mold builder craft and basically all it is is a big thing of latex rubber um, liquid latex rubber so I just painted some of that on here and I diced up a piece of lichen that I had actually from an old base that I have stripped but it's it's this and I just diced it up like I was Julia Child preparing a uh, preparing a tasty dish just chop it up make it nice and fine and I just painted on some of the latex and sprinkled this on it and I'm gonna let it dry and then dust off the stuff that doesn't stick because I don't really want that much full coverage but uh, once this dries and the stuff that sticks sticks and the stuff that doesn't stick falls off and then I may touch it with a little bit of paint over top of it but uh, I really like the natural look of this moss encrusted case and when I sit that next to the Jedi Master I think it'll look nice and I'm gonna get some uh, Spanish moss or something to kind of hang out over the edge and and uh, I don't know maybe a rubber snake but something to uh, to fill up the uh, uh, fill in the clean lines and make it look more like an old decrepit case And a long audio Society clip that a long audio clip that is. And put this to the side. But that's that's the goal for the rest of the day is to try to get that done up in such a way that I'm happy with it. And here is the more or less final look at the droids. The uh, I, I went a little bit overboard, I think, with uh, the aging on R5 there. But since he had had a much rougher life than R2, I thought it was appropriate to beat him up a little bit more. R2 is still relatively clean, but his feet are dirty. Dirty feet. But it's a more of a, I hate to say a clean dirt, but it is. This is more grays and blacks, whereas this is more browns and oils. So uh, he's a little cleaner. I'm going to go back in and maybe wipe some of that down still. That's a little bit much. But... Uh, these guys are done, and I'm debating whether or not I need to glue them to the base. I think that I do, but I'm afraid that if I do do that, do do that, um, 
that it's going to limit the potential for use in other areas or uh, posabilities. So I don't know, maybe I might uh, run a pin up and just pin them down to the base as opposed to um, you know a hard glued surface. If I pin them then he's at least uh, somewhat stable. If I move the box around I don't have to worry about them falling off. 3PO's kind of got this little anchor where his foot it fits in the base that the droids don't have. So i uh, still thinking about that but these are mostly done. I'm going to continue the mossing here and a little bit more distressing but uh, he's mostly done. Okay what I've done here is I have Switch to a finer grain of uh, moss, and it's this powdered stuff. And I uh, poured some or ran a, with a toothpick. I've been running this uh, rubber, latex rubber, into the uh, uh, cracks and just sprinkling some of the uh, stuff over it. And, you know, maybe rubbing it in with a finger and that type of stuff. And I'll come back and brush off the, the stray stuff. But I wanted to give the impression of, mold, of moss and mold that had uh, started to live in the cracks of this chest. And further aging it that way. And here is... The young Master Yoda, or old Master Yoda, with the box, which is not completely finished, but for the purposes of this report, it's finished because I'm really not going to spend too much time showing you how I put moss and stuff on it. But uh, this is the, what the total picture looks like. And that's all I have to say about that. And here's a nice final look at the droids with kind of a clean background behind them so that you uh, don't see a bunch of stuff on the table. But uh, very happy with how these guys turned out. And they are uh, in such a way that I can use the uh, well like the, uh, the, the, the alternate parts for them for R2 and his gadgets and whatnot, I can still open those doors and attach the gadgets and here are said gadgets. Um, I like the periscope that was used in Empire, but uh, not much use to use those in everyday life, so I think that's pretty much how the display is going to look most of the time. Yes, and that's the final word on these guys. And that's it for another weekend, yay. Uh, got some stuff done. Um, you know, when you start out with a little bit more modest goals, they're easier to obtain sometimes. But I've got uh, the base uh, The bases finished for the droids. Got the droids finished, got the base finished for the droids. Got the, uh, uh, I got another round or two to go on the mossing for Yoda's uh, chest o wisdom, but, uh, I'm not going to bore you with that because it's just more of the same of what you've already seen. Uh, I'm sure at some later video I may dig it out and show it to you again. But it's time to package these up. Well, package them up. Time to put them on a shelf and, and gaze at them lovingly. But I am going to uh, start the next uh, big build, the next couple of builds. One of which is, as promised, he's out of, he's out of range of the camera, but here he comes. Uh, one of which, as promised, is the Interstellar Ranger. That is the, uh, the next kit. And uh, also with that, I'm going to be working on that uh, one-man space pod from 2001, the Captain Cardboard. I picked that, I pulled that out the other night and uh, was cleaning parts, kind of, you know, while the television is on and you're sitting mindlessly doing something. Well, I was cleaning parts for that and uh, getting those ready for construction. So those are the next two big goals, and uh, I'm sure I'll be starting on those in next week's report. So until next week, go outside, have some fun, play with your kids, 
hug your neighbor, um, build a model, have some fun. See you then.